Here's my antennas. Got a 10, 15, 20, and 40 meter rotating dipole. Above that is a 3 element 6 meter beam. Above that is a 12 element 2 meter beam horizontal. Above that is a 11 element vertically polarized 2 meter beam. And down the about halfway up the tower is my that's a uh, 12, 17, and 30 meter inverted V. And also hanging off the tower I have an 80 and 160 meter inverted V and a 40 meter delta loop. And there is my portable dipole that I use for field day and as I do a scan here along to the north that's the view that I have so I have a pretty good takeoff angle here those are the sawtooth mountains to the north that is the uh, KTFI radio tower. We're entering the radio shack. We'll start over here in the rack, one of the racks anyway. Frequency counter. Monitor scope and a bird watt meter. A couple of tuners. My main tuner there is the black one. It is a Dentron GLT-1000. Built like a Sherman tank. I bought that thing back in the early 80s. Still use it. Good tuner. This is a Collins 51J3. Otherwise known as a military, military, it's a Collinsville R388 receiver. That's the one you're hearing right now when they're talking. That's my ICO 720 CW transmitter. Just like the one I had when I was a novice back in 1966. Still works. It's not the same one, but it's just like the one I had. That's my Ameritron AL80B kilowatt amplifier. Runs 3500Z in it. I can drive that with about 20 watts and get about 500 watts out. That's my Sony Veo laptop, one of the computers that I use here in the shack. That's my desktop computer. The microphone is a Electro Voice Model 664. And behind that is my tower rotator control and there's my Kenwood TS2000 that's the one of the newest rigs in the shack there bought that in 2005 that's a, an ICOM R7000 receiver covers 25 megahertz to about 1.3 gigahertz unblocked that was built and sold before the new law went into effect. Got some DX coming in on 15 meters here on the old R388. That is an HT37 transmitter built in the early 60s. I have that paired up with the R388 that I just showed you. That'll run uh, CW. AM and single sideband. I had one of those when I upgraded in 1967. I bought one just like that. 
and uh, paired it up with an NC300 receiver which I also have over here that I'll show you here shortly. I've got uh, various and unsundries. There's a headphone amplifier that I can route audio to different places and a Heathkit watt meter. Here's my one of my monitors for my desktop receiver or my desktop computer. Yeah, I got another monitor. I got two monitors on my desktop. Comes in really handy. There's a big old speaker that I absconded from one of the radio stations with that we weren't using anymore. And I use that as a speaker for the R388 and also the old uh, HQ180 that I have here in the shack. Also, it'll show you in just a minute. That's a Kenwood speaker that uh, I route the audio from a lot of my radios into. That next to it is an old uh, telegraph sounder from the railroad. It's not hooked up, it's just on display. That radio is a Kenwood TS520. Covers a, uh, 10 through 80 meters from the early 70s. That's one I traded uh, Jim W7OUU for. I gave him a VHF amplifier. This has a wonderful receiver in it. It's quiet and very sensitive. Hard to beat the old Kenwoods. There's my two meter rig along with uh, my Bencher CW paddle. That's an uh, old uh, straight key and an old uh, somewhat modified Navy CW key. That rig there is a, a Kenwood TS830. It is the a little bit newer and a big brother to the 520 that I just showed you. This one covers uh, 10 through 160 meters and it also covers the warp bands, 12, 17, and 30 meters. The uh, 520 covers 10, 15, 20, 40, and 80. Did not uh, cover the warp bands. That's just an Autech Research audio filter that I have that I use once in a while. And this radio here is a Drake 2NT CW transmitter. It's kind of the same vintage as the ICO 720 that I showed you a minute ago. It is crystal controlled as is the ICO. You gotta plug in crystals like this. These are somewhat unique because uh, this one will operate on uh, 7.032 kilohertz on 40 meters and uh, you can also operate that on 14064 on 20 meters because uh, you can use a second harmonic and even the third harmonic just depends on what the transmitter will handle but in that way you could get one crystal and if you if you timed the crystal just right or chose the crystal correctly you could uh, operate two or three bands with just one crystal by using the harmonic Second harmonic of uh, 7.1, for instance, would be 14.2 kilohertz. Third harmonic would be 21.3 and so on. This receiver is the granddaddy of the Hammerlands, or one of them anyway. It's a Hammerland HQ180. It's a general coverage receiver. And it's a great old tube receiver. Got a lot of knobs and they're fun to turn. The microphone is a, a static D104, they call them a lollipop type microphone. That's the one that I use on my Johnson Viking 2 AM tr and CW transmitter. I use that one on Sunday mornings uh, a lot of times uh, to operate AM. It'll run about 90 watts AM and that on top is the VFO that goes with it. It is also crystal controlled. They have a room for 10 crystals that you can plug in inside the radio and then choose them on a switch on the front. Here is a Heathkit Hot Water 16 CW transceiver. It'll operate 15, 40, and 80 meters. It's crystal controlled the receiver is tunable. It's crystal controlled transmitter or you can use the HG10 VFO that I have plugged into it there. 
Then over to the right of that, I've got a little uh, CW keyer that goes with the Heath kit and a little audio filter. In another rack, that is a Tektronix 2712 Spectrum Analyzer. Here is another HT37 transmitter, exactly like the one I showed you a minute ago. I have that paired up with the NC300 receiver that I was telling you about. This is not the ex these are not the exact radios, but those are the exact models of radios that I had when I upgraded from novice to general back in 1967. It is a handband only receiver, the NC300, the uh, HT37 operates 10, 15, 20, 40, and 80 meters. All tube type, of course. The microphone is a Electro Voice Slim Air microphone. Really looks cool. Looks gold plated, but I think it's brass. I think that's a model 638 microphone, if I'm not mistaken, but they call it the Slim Air. So that's pretty much a rundown of the shack. I got a messy workbench back and behind there. You can tell I really cleaned things up for the tour here. But uh, all these old radios are fun to use. And it's like stepping back in time on some of them. The old tube types, some of them are hybrids. I've got a couple of other radios. I've got the uh, Yesu FT817 QRP radio, and I've also got a ICOM 718 that I use for a suitcase rig that I use on field day. Those are fairly modern rigs. Well, they all are modern rigs all solid state. In behind I've got there's no way you can keep this stuff neat so it all starts off neat when you build it and then as you go it just kinda goes into a mess but I've got my antenna switches so that I can switch any antenna to any of my HF rigs and it works out real well. So that's pretty much the tour of the K7SU Ham Shack and I appreciate you riding along.